I have another great idea. And like my last great idea about flipping a coin to pay for dinner, this one also involves food and probability. This time, we're going to get a two liter bottle of Diet Coke and a roll of Mentos candy. We will unwrap the candies, open up the bottle of Coke, and dump those Mentos candies into the bottle of Diet Coke. And that is where the fun ensues. It's one of my favorite examples of science experimentation to do with small children and always use Diet Coke because it is a lot easier to clean up than that stuff that contains the corn syrup. And always, always do this experiment outdoors. I won't make that mistake twice. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then the answer, as always, is GTS. Use your favorite search engine to find an example of a video that shows you what happens when you put Mentos into Diet Coke. But for all the rest of us, let's talk about what I am illustrating with this experiment. In fact, what I'm illustrating is an experiment. An experiment is any procedure that generates a well-defined outcome. We might call what happens when you put Mentos into Diet Coke a well-defined outcome, but it's also a whole lot of fun. Still, this is a scientific experiment. And let's use this as our starting point to explain the difference between scientific experiments and statistical experiments. In a scientific experiment, physical laws determine the outcome. Without going into the physical laws about Diet Coke and Mentos, there is some science happening. And because of this, this scientific experiment is replicable. You will get the same outcome every time. It doesn't matter when or how often, any time you put Diet Coke and Mentos together, you get the same glorious outcome and it can be controlled. So for instance, we could change the size of the aperture out of which the Diet Coke is flowing to see if we could increase the height of the geyser. Or maybe we increase the amount of Diet Coke or the amount of Mentos and we see what happens, what gives us the best outcome. When we do scientific experiments, it's very likely that we'll be testing some drug or some process to see if it improves on what is already known or the type of process or drug that we already have. In order to do so in our scientific experiment, we will want to use random selection in which we randomly select participants and random assignment in which we randomly assign those randomly selected participants to be in one of two groups. What we are doing is manipulating variables. We are creating a control group and an experimental group. We randomly assign participants into one of those two groups, and one of those groups gets the drug, the other gets a placebo. The control group helps to make the comparison. The only difference between the control group and the experimental group is that one group got the drug and the other did not. Therefore, we can begin to establish cause and effect because there is no difference between these groups at the outset. And yet, the only thing that separated them, the presence or absence of this drug, accounted for the change that we saw in our dependent variable following our experiment. Now, these are the qualities of a scientific experiment. What about a statistical experiment? In a statistical experiment, probability rather than physical laws determine the outcome. The outcome is not replicable, it is stochastic, a different outcome each time. Every time you roll the dice, you get a different outcome. And the outcome is observational as opposed to being controlled. We don't know what's going to happen. Even as the experimenters, the ones who organize the experiment, we have no idea the outcome of the dice any better than anyone else who is participating. That's what makes this a statistical experiment. It is the randomness in which the outcome is never certain. So what is this randomness which characterizes a statistical experiment? 
Very simply, random means that we can't predict the outcome. We know that there will be an outcome, but we cannot reliably predict what that outcome will be. So take for example, if we are rolling a pair of dice. We know that the outcome will be a one through six on one die, one through six on the other die, but we don't know what any particular roll will be. I got a five, a four, and a one. Also an unforeseen outcome. Probably should have seen that coming. But I won't make that mistake again either. Pick a card, any card, at random, and don't tell me what it is. And so you pick a card at random, could never have predicted that, and we bury it back in the deck. At the outset, we know that there are multiple outcomes which could occur. You could have picked any card in the deck. So what determined the card that you actually picked? And this is called the reality outcome generator. It is what determines an outcome. The outcome generator of reality is invisible. Out of all of the possible outcomes, out of any card that you could have chosen from the deck, reality converges on the single event that actually occurs. In a statistical experiment, one and only one outcome will occur for a trial. So for instance, when you choose a card, there are four possible suits from which you could choose. Hearts and diamonds, spades, and clubs. I don't know which one it will be, but I do know that it must be one of those four suits. Or when you roll a six-sided die. I don't know what the outcome will be, but I do know that one and only one outcome will occur, and that outcome will be between one and six. Or when you flip a coin, the outcome will be either heads or tails. One and only one outcome can occur. This time it's tails. Or you're playing the ancient game of Astragalus. There are only four possible outcomes that can occur for each of the bones. And if you don't know what Astragalus is, GTS. Or perhaps you're making a sales call. One and only one outcome can occur. You either make the sale or you do not. There's no such thing as almost making the sale. In fact, almost making a sale is indistinguishable from not making a sale. Or we're looking at patients in a hospital. The treatment that they receive could make them better, make them worse, or no change. But one and only one outcome can occur. In an experiment with two steps, each step having two possible outcomes, we know that there are a total of four possible outcomes that could occur from any of those combinations. But again, one and only one of those outcomes will occur for each repetition of our statistical experiment.